After being sick and out of commission for a week or so, I finally got moving again, got back into Open Art, my favorite AI image and video platform, and I noticed a whole bunch of new stuff. Well, it's either new or maybe some things that just slipped by me and I hadn't noticed before. Either way is possible, because Open Art is always adding new goodies, new tools, features, and models to their platform. But it got me to thinking you might have missed some of these new additions too, and maybe they'd be handy for your creative projects. So we're going to check out a handful of them first, thanks to Open Art for sponsoring this video. Here we are on the main Open Art page, we'll go to video, and then over on the left, OpenArt has this really handy sub menu. If we click this top left button here that says toggle secondary menu, we get all these things that we can do with video. And the one we're going to check out right now is restyle video. And then if this menu makes things too crowded, just toggle it back off. To get the source video we want to restyle, you can click anywhere in this box and you get an option to upload or select it from your history, what you've generated right here on OpenArt. Or you can just drag and drop the video into that box. I'm going to restyle this short skateboarding clip. Next, choose a style. Get a few popular styles at the top, like the blocky Lego design or the Ghibli fantasy style. But then they've got all these categories here, and under each category are multiple styles to choose from. So that's realistic and classic art. Then they have the anime and Japanese inspired styles, and fantasy and sci-fi, cartoon and animated. They got Pixar, classic Disney, Rick and Morty, bold comic book style, then material and sculpture. If if you're looking for a bronze or chocolate video. In the crafted and toy light category, they've got clay stop motion, soft fabric texture, and several others in there to pick from. And then retro and stylized has retro pixel art like an old video game. Let's go back up under fantasy and sci-fi because I don't show a whole lot of that. So let's try a futuristic cyberpunk look. Then pick a resolution at 480p. My five second video will be 150 credits. If we go to 1080p, it'd be 300 credits to reset style my five second video. We'll do that. For the style strength, it ranges between 1.2 and 2. The default is 1.6, right in the middle of that range. So let's go ahead and stick with that and click create. And here's our video restyled to the futuristic cyberpunk look. It's made some big changes to the sky. It's got an LED light dropped there in the middle, and it looks like uh, our guys are wearing these helmets now. I took a few other videos and restyled them with a bunch of these different styles, so you, you can see how the different ones turn out. Let's take a look at those, starting with this cartoon chase sequence. This is the original video I gave it, sort of a 3D Pixar style, and here's that same video in several different styles. I put the style name up at the top of the video. Next up, I started with an AI-generated clip of this guy dancing like nobody's watching, and here's that same clip in a variety of different styles. Sometimes it adds more than just the style, like changing what's on the wall behind him, or maybe even popping in some random person in there. And I'm not going to make fun of AI guys dancing, because I'm sure I couldn't do any better. Next, I took this video of a guy walking down the street and restyled that in several different ways here. Some creative uses for this might be to do what I've done here, where you take the same video and just have sort of a rapid sequence of different styles. It could also be handy if you've got a video that doesn't turn out so well. Maybe just kind of lean into that and turn it into a cartoon or a style that it'd be a little bit more forgiving. Another idea might be to restyle a clip, something like this, where you've got a clear subject and background, and then maybe in your video editing software, separate the two so that you have maybe the original background, but the restyled character in that original background. While we're still here in the video section, let's go ahead and toggle that secondary menu open. The next thing I want to show you is magic effects. This one's really simple and beginner friendly. We're going to pick the effect we want and the character we want to apply it to. To see all the effects that are available, just click this change button. Now, a lot of these are Christmas themed right now, and that makes sense considering the time of year that this is coming out, but they have these categories listed across the top, so I'm sure they'll be adding a lot more of these in the future. We'll switch back to Christmas. We'll just do this blowing kiss, the one they had on the front page. It tells you at the top of each one of these how many credits it'll take, so we'll click on that. Now we just need to show it who the character is. You can either select an image from your history of what you've created here on Open Art. If you've created any consistent characters on Open Art, you can just click here and select which character you want to use, or you can drag and drop an image of your character. With that all set, we'll hit create, and it's gotten to work generating that video. Now there may be some of these. Let me click this change button, come back in here to the effects like this one, the gift unboxing. We'll need to upload an image of the character and the gift that we want coming out of that gift box when it's opened. So let's go back in there, and this time let's do the ugly sweater. We'll click on that one. I'm gonna bring in a different character image, and we'll go ahead and create that. Let's see how they turned out. <laughs> 
notice it added some festive red pants and this white fur at the bottom of her sweater. That's interesting. Here's Ugly Sweater Guy. We've got him in a nice festive scene, but it doesn't look like we got the ugly sweater. It's AI, so there will be some duds. If I really needed this guy in an ugly sweater, I could try and re-roll that. But let's go take a look at some of the other ones I've created. You'll see Ugly Me in an ugly sweater. That one had the sound built in. Fortunately, this one does not. You'd probably hear me grunting or passing out. For all of these, I put my starting image that I used and the name of the effect that I used up there on the left so you can see what's what in case it's something that you want to use. And yes, I did notice that cabinet just sort of morphed into an oven that the dog pulled the turkey out of. I don't think these things are really intended for like hi-fi filmmaking. They're more fun, social media, that kind of thing. But they're super simple to do. They're really quick and maybe to give you inspiration for something you want to go prompt and create in one of the image video models. So for this Christmas hug effect, I thought I needed to give it an image of two people and they would hug each other. No, no, no. The effect provides the hugger. You provide the image of the huggy. So I would really feel bad for getting this guy in trouble, having this random woman in the Santa suit coming up and hugging him when he's standing next to his wife or girlfriend or whatever. But then again, they're all AI, so no feelings are hurt anywhere. It's all good. I like how the hat and scarf just sort of fly in and land on the dog. The best part of this one is his reaction when he sort of falls in the snow there. This one's the Christmas muscle effect, and it's uncanny how this thing knew exactly what I look like with my shirt off. I'm not sure how I ended up with two of these with me dancing, but you're welcome. Then I spun myself up and turned into a toy. I used this picture of me from back in the day with the Christmas hug effect. Then in the non-Christmas effects, I found this shake dance effect. And then Granny from out on the farm wanted in on that shake dance too. The next tool we're going to look at is Replace Character. That's here in Video. Again, you can expose this secondary menu if it's hidden, and then just come down and click Replace Character. For the video, you can click anywhere in this panel and either upload or select from your history if it's something you created on OpenArt, or as we've done in the other places, just drag and drop your video into that panel. And what we're going to do is replace the guy in this video with someone else. For this one, you have a couple of model options, either Kling01 or OpenArt Replace. In my testing, Kling01 has done a better job with this, so that's what we're going to use. Then come down under the video and select whether you want to replace the entire character, the whole body, or just the face. We're going to stick with body, and now we need to tell it who we want in there. If you created an image of your character here on OpenArt, you can click Select Image, and then click History, and then select whatever image you want to use, and click Confirm. If you've created a consistent character on OpenArt, just click this Character button, and select which character you want to use. Or you can just drag and drop your character image. Down at the bottom, it shows you how many credits it'll take. If you're good with that, click Create. And it's ready. Let's see how it did replacing our character. Okay, that looks like our character. It looks like it's blending pretty well. Everything else about the video, even the motion of how she's walking like the original character was walking, that all stayed the same. I used Replace Character with a few different videos and starting character images, like our guy dancing from earlier. Then the one of the guy walking down the street. Instead, I put this blue furry guy in his place. Then our old character, Lorenzo, Lorenzo wanted to do some dancing. Now his face got a little muddy in there in some spots. And then I swapped out Granny in that shake dance video with this lady. How about doing a face or head swap with an image? That's the next tool. For that one over here on the left, we'll click image. We've got our secondary menu. If you don't see it, just click this toggle and it'll pop back out. Down at the bottom, we'll click swap. Two modes to pick from here, either swap face or swap head. We'll go with head. For the target image, that's the one that has the scene that we want, just not the right face or head. So I'm going to drag that in and drop it right there. And then the reference image is the face or head that you want to use. So we'll drag and drop that in there. So that should put this head on this body. Let's go ahead and click create. Looks like it kept everything about the scene the same, except for the head swap that we wanted. I tried that in a few other scenes with an image of me. This first one in the boat, I thought, man, it looks like my head is just too big there. So it could be a proportion issue. Maybe if I had run it again, it would have come out differently. But I also noticed as I really looked at my target image, the angle of the shot kind of has the original guy's head a little bit big in proportion to his body as well. So that might have been the issue there. I also swapped in my head in this image. No complaints here. I think that one came out just fine. And I'm not sure how in both these images, this one and the last one of me and the lady in the boat, how it knew to put the head on the guy and not on the gal. I kind of expect it to pop up in different places or both places, but hey, it worked. I know what you're thinking. Why do I need a head or face swap tool when I could just do that with Nano Banana Pro? 
I agree, that's probably the first place that I would go to do something like that. And Nano Banana Pro is great, but it's AI, it's not perfect, it doesn't always come out the way you want, and it's good to have another option. While we're still here in the image section, the last thing I wanna show you is this camera angle control. You can either upload your image or select it from your history here on OpenArt. I'll just go ahead and drag and drop mine in again. Now we need to show it how we wanna change the angle. You can use these sliders down here and move them left to right or rotate up and down. If you get things out of whack, you can always click this little reset button to go back to your starting point. You can also just click on the image here. It's on this cube and you can drag it however you want it to be. Under camera type, if you want it to back the camera out a bit, you can choose wide angle. If you want it to zoom in, you can choose close up. And then back up top here, the model, there's OpenArt Ultra and OpenArt Fast. Now, fast is faster. It's also cheaper. It's about half the credits, but the quality isn't quite as good as ultra. So we're going to stick with ultra. And there's our image with the camera angle moved left. Something else that's really handy here is this create all checkbox. So if we go ahead and click that, I think it'd probably be okay to leave this the way it is, but I'm going to reset it just in case. We're going to stay on the open art ultra model. This is going to be 220 credits, but if we go ahead and click create all with that box checked, it's creating multiple images from a variety of different camera angles. So this one down here on the right is the one that we created just doing one camera angle change. And then the rest of these all came from that create all. And that gave us a variety of angles, more to the left, more to the right, zoomed in like this one, zoomed out, the camera up angling down or the camera down a little lower pointing slightly up. And it even gives us a rear angle of our subject. Now it doesn't take the camera out and shoot from behind the subject. It just sort of spins the subject in that environment. I used that camera angle control and the create all option with a starting image of me and got all these different angles, angled down, angled up, all the different sides, even one looking at the back of my head. Now, like I said, it didn't take the camera around behind me. It just sort of spun me in my chair around to show that angle. But if it's the angle of the subject you're looking for, that should be fine. This could be really handy if you have one image of your subject and you want to create a consistent character using that feature in open art, or you want to train a model or to have reference images from different angles when you're using something like Omni Reference. Open art has a ton of tools, models, and features for generating and editing AI images and videos. They've even got audio from Eleven Labs and they've also got a voice cloning feature now. I'll leave a link to open art in the description if you wanna check it out and see all that they have to offer. Hey, my name is Bob. I appreciate you hanging out with me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining and I hope you'll come back and join me for another video.